So today I'm here uh, to tell you how to get better pictures and how all of us can get better pictures. So let me explain you where my motivation comes from. So here's the pictures that I took in London of the same river three years ago. And it's a nice picture, that's how I remember it. It was a really nice evening. It was a bit cold, but I have this gorgeous sky in front of me, a lot of nice cloud, nice view of London. Unfortunately, first when I look at my picture, how my camera recorded it, this is what I saw. Much less interesting, very dark, no, nothing that great. It didn't recapture how I see it. It's not such a nice picture. So what I did for the picture I show you first, that I work on it. So let me show you another example of that. I've been lucky enough to go to Barbados and again has this gorgeous sunset. Beautiful cloud, a lot of nice colors everywhere. Like really a, a very nice moment. But again, I had to work on it to get this picture how I saw it because otherwise my camera gave me that at the beginning. And again, it's flat, doesn't have many details, not very appealing. Um, but I know how to do it, so I did it, spent some time and I got some good results. So let me tell you what I would have had to do like a long time ago, before we had computers, I would have to go in the dark room. So I don't know if you ever tried, like if you never tried it worth doing once or twice, it's fun. But if you do it many times, it can start to be a bit boring because it's pretty long, it's pretty hard. So let me describe you how we work in the dark room. We have a projector and we put the negative, we choose carefully the paper, then we use a piece of cardboard to make some shadows and some lights there and decide which part are going to be brighter or darker. Then we use some chemicals and we put the print paper in the chemical and we develop it. So it's pretty hard, there's a lot of choices to be made and if any of these choices is wrong, basically we have to start again from scratch, we have to take the paper, trash it and redo everything from the beginning. So not only it's long, it's error prone, but just to make it harder, we do that in the dark, so it's very easy to get it wrong. <laughs> so today, most of the time, we don't work like that anymore. We have photo editing software that make our life a lot easier. That if something goes wrong, just do undo and repeat the last step. I don't have to start again from scratch. And maybe most importantly, I don't have to work in the dark anymore. However, this software was developed in a time where photography was mostly made uh, by a few skilled photographers. I would argue that this is very hard to use, but for a professional it's not a big issue. But today we are all photographers, we all take pictures all the time, we have cell phones, we have all sorts of small cameras that fit in our pocket. And this kind of tool is hard to use, and if you ever tried, you know that this screenshot I have has nothing special about it. This is what we see when we use such a software. I know how to use it, but I don't think it should be that hard to get good pictures. So I'm not a photographer, I'm actually a computer scientist. And what I do is I try to make computer work for me. That's what I know how to do. I'm not very good at photography, but I'm better, I'm good at making computers work for me. So when I face that problem, what I try to do is to make the computer do it for me, to make the picture look better on its own. And actually that's what I did. I took that button in that software and I made it better. So, I'm going to explain you what we did to make the auto button of Photoshop better. So, first we started, the first goal was to take a picture that looked flat and not very interesting, as we have seen, and to make it look like a postcard. We did not set a very ambitious goal to start from, we just something, wanted something manageable. So first things first, we want to reach the stage of a postcard. Nothing very artistic, but just to make it look uh, okay, and then we can work from there. So what we did is that we gathered 5,000 pictures and we asked five trained photographers to work on these pictures so that we see what photographers actually do. We wanted to know what professionals do. And we didn't try to solve anything related to color. So we didn't wor worry about color temperature or color saturation, for instance. So it might sound like a fairly easy goal, but it's actually really hard. There's a lot of many different pictures, a lot of different things that a photographer do. So it took us more than a year to find a solution to this problem. And I will tell you a bit the process that went behind it. So first we look at the pictures and we say, oh my God, like it's not going to work ever. Like we ask five photographers to do the very same thing on the very same pictures and here's the result that we got. It's all different. Like they have very subjective interpretations, very different 
ways to interpret a picture and get different results. And when we saw that, first we say it's not going to work. So there's no way to find a, a good solution to that problem. But then we look at a second picture. And then we realize that there's some hope. Because again, it's all over the place. It's very different. But I want you to remark that, for instance, photographer A likes dark picture. And photographer E likes bright pictures. And they always have the same kind of subjective bias. Look back to that picture. A likes dark pictures and E likes bright pictures. So maybe there's a lot of different interpretation of a single picture, but one photographer has the same personal interpretation of it. So we set up our goal not to learn, not to re being able to do what every photographer do, but we chose one and we try to do our best as we can to reproduce what that one photographer did. So the first thing that we did is that we look at the detail of the operations that are made by photographers and we learn something important. We learned that brightness and contrast explain 95% of the operations that are done by your photographers on average. So every photographer knows that brightness and contrast are important. There's nothing very new there. What's new is that brightness and contrast is not important. It is everything. It's 95% of it. Like if we get brightness and contrast right, we get it. We have solved our problem. So that was an important part uh, that we used to design our algorithm. And I'm going to tell you a bit more how this algorithm works. So I have my picture, my sunflower, and I have this, so I don't know what the result should be for that sunflower, but I have 5,000 pictures that I know what a photographer has done on these 5,000 pictures. So the first step is to find which of these 5,000 pictures are actually useful and related to that sunflower. So most of them are not related, but a few are. So once I found these pictures that are related, I actually copy what the photographer has done on them onto my sunflower. And this is the result. So let me show you a bit more of this result and we'll discuss about it. So this was my sunflower as recorded by the camera. And this is our result. And first I think we can argue that it's a lot better. It pops out more. But something else that I want to tell you is that since it was a research project at the beginning, we could go back to the photographer and ask that person to retouch the sunflower for us. And we didn't show the result of the computer to the photographer, and we didn't give the result of the computer uh, of the photographer to the computer. So it was a fair game. No, none of the two sides knew about the other, so we can compare. So this is what our algorithm predicted, and this is what the photographer has done. So it's not the same, but it's close enough. And I think it's uh, that's it good enough to be useful in many cases. So here's a different view of the same result. So again, there are subtle differences, but I would argue they are subtle. And for many people, including me, I think it's already a big step forward to be able to get that just by the single push of a button. So let me show you another example. So here's my niece. <laughs> and, yeah, she's very cute, I agree. <laughs> uh, but the picture was a bit flat and like a bit like pop to it. So we were able to do that with our algorithm. And again, we compare to what the photographer did, and here was the result. And again, it's not exactly the same, but it's close enough, I argue, that it would be useful. So that's the first step that we have done, how to go from a picture straight off the camera to something that's better. So it's not very subjective yet, but it, I think, helps a lot compared to using a complex software. But actually, we did more. And I'm going to show you how we can go further and get uh, down the road of artistic pictures. So if you remember, one of the problems that I had with a London picture, it was too dark. And it's a fairly common problem. So here's an example of picture that's too dark. So there's an easy solution to that, is to just take a longer exposure picture, but then it becomes too bright. But we're working with a computer, so we can do something. So the first thing I can do is I can say, if it's too dark, make it brighter. If it's bright, don't touch it. So I get something in between, like that, it's already a lot better. But if we look, we have lost a lot of details. A lot of the texture is gone, the picture looks fairly flat. So we did an algorithm that makes this kind of compensation of the dark region, but do not lose the details. So we can get a much better looking picture with details and a lot of uh, information there. And I would argue that if I didn't tell you that I processed that picture, 
it looks very real and that was a goal here so we fix the dark problem but remember also I tend if you remember my picture I like to push the details I like to show what's going on in the cloud what's, what's going on in the water so not only I can bring back the details but I can also go a bit beyond so I'm going to exa exaggerate it to show my point so I can bring a lot of detail in that picture and that goes in the direction to start to have personal expression and subjective interpretation of the picture. But that can also be useful to other field. So for instance, here's a, an astronomy picture. And again, this common problem with astronomy pictures is that they're dark and stars are very bright. Um, so we don't see much. But using the very same algorithm onto this picture, I can get this result. And now I see a lot more. And I'm not an astronomer, but I think that Looking at a picture like that is much easier to interpret and understand because we see a lot more, it's easier to, to see what's going on. So now we have taken care of pictures that are too dark. We have a way to bring up details. But what I wanted to do is something that really makes it easy to choose my own style, to express myself to a, an artistic version. And I'm not sure how much details I need to put, but what I know is what I like. So here's a scenario that we proposed is that starting from the picture on the top I would like the computer to make it look like this artist picture on the bottom by a famous artist named Ansel Adams so I don't want to have to do anything except saying I like this picture by this artist please make mine look the same right that's what I want to be able to do so let me show you how we can do that so here's my picture and here's a version made by the computer using the example by the artist as the model and what's nice is that I can choose another artist and right away, without any complex manipulation, I get another interpretation. And maybe yet another artist and get another interpretation. And where that becomes interesting is that, let's say now I like this artist here, and I can apply the very same style to many different pictures without any additional effort. No need to go, no sliders, no brush, nothing complicated to do, just load another picture and I get another result. So I'm almost done with the tools that I, I want to use to get good pictures. That now I can get my subjective style, I can get a lot of details. It's very easy, I just need to show what I like. But remember, what I've shown you at the beginning, I tend to like sunset. They have this very distinctive looks that make them very appealing. And so I'd like to be able to choose a time of day, but I'm not always there at the right time. So here's a picture of Singapore at just uh, at sunset but uh, for some reason let's assume I would like a night picture out of it and we have a solution to do that so here's a picture of Singapore at night it's not a real picture we cheated all over the place it's a fake it's all a fake but you know I was not there at night and that's the only picture I had was this one <laughs> so that's how I do you know th that I think it's pretty good given that I cannot go back there that'd be much easier to get that than flying again to Singapore so I'm going to show a bit uh, under the hood what's going on there. So in our algorithm, we have preloaded more than 400 time-lapse videos taken all over the world. And some are very different, like this outdoor scene on the right, but some look close enough, for instance, Dubai on the left. So here's the idea that the, this time-lapse video of Dubai, it's not Singapore, but it's close enough to Singapore that I can look at it and learn how to uh, the color change throughout the day and that's what we use to change the color of Dubai of Singapore we look at the color changes in Dubai and we apply this change to Singapore so once I have this mechanism I can do a lot of things so let me show you another one so here's a picture taken in the middle of the afternoon and I would like a sunset and again that's the only picture I have of this place so here's a picture that we have have. And we're able to bring in these orangey uh, tones that are very specific to sunset. And again, what, where I think it becomes interesting, if I didn't tell you it was a fake that we process this picture, it looks a very plausible rendition of that place at sunset. But since I can choose any time of day, I can actually make a, a more fine control, where here I can choose arbitrary uh, version of this thing, like sunset, middle of the day, right there or come back at sunset and choose full freedom over the time of day that the scene appear 
no, I'm not constrained anymore by the time I took my picture. So this is what I wanted to show you today. And just before uh, the end of my talk, I want to acknowledge that none of that would have happened without great collaborators. And this is available in products, and none of that would have happened without the great product teams. So thank you very much.